Okay, so here's what I thought we'd uh, be talking about last video, but we weren't, where, oh, sorry, where we talk briefly about going from polar equations to rectangular equations. And when I say briefly, I mean briefly. Because the truth of the matter and trigonometry and algebra textbooks refuse to say this part aloud. So I will say it aloud. We usually cannot take a polar equation and rewrite it as a rectangular equation. Even something like this, which seems to be about as ridiculously simple as an equation can get, there is no way for us to take this and rewrite it as a rectangular equation. So, because we usually can't, how much time do we want to spend looking at the fringe cases that textbooks think up so that they can have sections like this? Well, I don't know how long the this video is going to run, but we will spend however long it takes to do a single example where stuff does work out nicely. If you're following along in the textbook, this is example nine. R equals two times the secant of theta. Um, this is R equals two divided by the cosine of theta. We can multiply both sides by the cosine of theta And then we say, wait a minute, r times the cosine of theta, I recognize that r times the cosine of theta is x. And so we have taken an equation in polar coordinates and rewritten it as an equation in rectangular coordinates. But again, I should emphasize that this is an example that was grown in a laboratory to work nicely. I mean, what if instead of the secant you'd have the tangent. The same trick we used on the left-hand example would work for a while, and then it would stop working. X, but on the right-hand side, 
there's nothing we can do with this two times the sign of theta. And all we can really do are, is, uh, is shrug our shoulders in defeat. So the, of the two examples I have on the board, I would say that the right-hand side is kind of the rule. The left-hand side, where things work out nicely, is the exception. 